Well hello and welcome along to another video. A few days ago Chris All the Gear No Idea released a video on how to build a loop aerial uh, which I'll link to down below. Um, and a few hours before that we were discussing loop aerials and stuff and how to build them and his idea inspired me to build something that I've been wanting to make for some years now and that's the official hacker loop aerial for radio alignment. Anyone familiar with hacker radios and have and who has the manuals will know that uh, they describe in most of the manuals how to make a loop aerial for radio alignment. And this is it. It's something uh, that I had most of the materials for. The only thing I didn't have is some copper tubing. Now this is 10 millimeter microbore tubing, which you can get from plumbing supplies. The box is built from, I think, 0.8 brass sheet. I only had two inches wide. They recommend two and a half inches wide to make a square box. I've made a rectangular box, so slightly bigger. But they do give full instructions about how to make one. So it consists of, and I shall read this out, a length of copper or brass tube of a diameter suitable to clear three stat strands of 20 SWG PVC wire or similar. The tube is then bent into a circle of approximately 10 inches diameter and the two ends pass through a copper or brass box approximately two and a half inches square, the latter having one side. That's the open side. So to build this you will need um, a bit of an oomphy soldering iron your regular electronics, PCB, point-to-point -point wiring, soldering arm will not do. You will need something with a large thermal mass, like this 100 watt soldering arm, which is designed to make stained glass windows with. Something a bit, you know, powerful. Now, I already had this, because I do a lot of valve radio work, and sometimes there is connections direct to chassis, so I use this, or a Weller 100 watt gun but this thing is much more powerful than the Weller 100 watt gun. This is an Antex, um, for those interested, an Antre Antex HP 100 watt. They're about 20 to 25 pounds, I think. So, I cut the brass sheet out and then I've soldered it rather unprofessionally. And then you'll need a hole for a BNC which will fit in the front here and you'll need a hole for the solder side so just slightly bigger than this 10mm tubing but we'll see how that goes because you want to leave enough space for the solder to get in there so I might have to ream that out slightly and a 13mm uh, hole in the end to suit a suitable grommet in this particular case your grommet might be different so that's all it is. The copper tubing arrived with me uh, coiled up in a much tighter coil than this. So I've gone outside and shaped this 10 inch circle using a flower pot. Um, and hopefully it's going to look rather circular, which is the intention. Now this stuff is quite easy at this sort of radius to work uh, by hand. As you can see I can move it about. Now I will need to bend it slightly to get it through this brass box obviously. But we're going to go ahead and fit it all up now. The other things you will need is a 405 ohm resistor and obviously in modern days you can use a 390 and a 15R connected in series. And I can't remember where I've put them now. Oh yeah there they're in there so I'm going to make a little uh, PCB up and just connect them together just for stability and so it looks nice and then they can sit in the bottom of the box there and then connect to the live side of the BNC so let me get the soldering iron fired up and we'll try and fit this in there here I don't know how I'm going to get the aerial so it's absolutely perpendicular but I've got a rafters square so I can try and use that. So let me get set up for that.
Right, I've got it set up for soldering now and I've used a couple of these wooden wedges from a Roberts R200 just to level the loop up and I've got the brass box sitting on one side here. So this soldering iron is a bit of a beast. Now I did have some proper brass solder and flux um, but the flux has dried up because I last used it about 10 years ago I would think. So and you'll see what I mean, this has got even more um, mass now, so I'm not sure how, how well the solder will actually melt. So it is actually melting obviously, but um, it isn't sticking. So you can see you need a fair old amount of heat, which you're going to sit here and be bored watching me trying to get this up to any form of temperature. So what I would do normally is just hold this on here until it heats up and then start introducing the solder and I am going to start to flux it and see that's now stuck. So that's going to be perhaps easier than I thought. So perhaps I won't stop. So I'm just going to daub it with some flux and then see how well we get on. Yeah, it is actually. This is more like welding soldering. But once I've got one end done, this is not very professional. Once I've got one, so it is actually working now. Lovely. And it is actually soldering to the box, so that's much better than I thought it would be. Let me just put this away. Cause, uh, and this, this thing takes a fair old amount of time to cool down as well. So let's have a look at that solder joint. the tube is remarkably hot. So I'm sure other people could do better but that's the solder joint I've got at the moment. I'm sorry. Now I don't have a fully equipped workshop. I do all my stuff by hand so I've got to make do the best I can. So I'm going to go around and finish that off and uh, it looks a bit messy at the moment but once we get it cleaned off It'll look absolutely great and you wouldn't know the difference. Well, here's the unit all welded, I should say, rather than soldered. It's a bit agricultural, but um, sometimes you just got to make the best of what you got. And um, obviously, solder is a soft metal, so I can get in with a file and clean that weld up. Looks like that really belongs on a tank. But uh, never mind. I have to heat one section at a time and then go round again and go round again because what I want what I don't want to do is heat it up so much that it springs the box joints. And I've also added some solder inside. Now I could have gone straight inside, but obviously I can't get round the back. So that's why I went round the outside and I can finish that off much better than I can on the inside. So that's why I went for the outside rather than the inside. But I would warn you, if you're using a 100 watt soldering iron, that does get rather hot. It may seem a bit obvious, but um, sometimes it isn't. And you can just go and pick the aerial up when you're finished. And uh, it's not that hot. It's not hot enough to burn you, but it is hot. Especially if you've got a soldering iron or something in, um, in your other hand. So that's where we got to so far. Next job is to clean up that joint and obviously I can use a file for that and stuff and then we'll come back and we'll do the uh, electrical side of things. Well here's where I'm up to so far. I've cleaned up this joint, made it a little more presentable 
and then I've also threaded three turns of 26 SWG wire through the loop. Now Hacker recommend 20 SWG but then again they don't specify the internal bore of the pipe they just say a pipe big enough to clear three turns of 20 SWG wire. So that's what I've got I don't think it particularly matters and 26 AWG or just general hookup wire is what I've got so that's what I've used. Next thing to do is to fit the BNC Oh, and I've also made up a little 405R resistor package out of a 390 and a 15. So, and then just covered it in heat shrink. Because I'm not sure where I'm going to position that yet. I hope it might be up the top there. So the next thing to do is fit the BNC. Which fits very nicely, thank you very much. Try and keep those pegs horizontal or vertical. I doubt that will actually happen once I get fiddling inside. Now this is going to be really fiddly isn't it? Perhaps I should have done this before threading the wire through. Yes, I think I should have done because I'm an idiot. Yes, I'm definitely an idiot. Right, I think I might do this off camera because it's I've got not I've got particularly big hands, but I am quite a big chap and Oh, I've got it, got it. Next is the solder tag because we'll need that to secure one end of this wire. So I'm gonna make life a little bit easier and bend it up first. Not that much. I definitely should have fitted this BNC first. And BNCs can be a bit of annoying because I haven't, or annoying for me, because I haven't got a, uh, a deep enough socket to do that. I'm going to do this off camera because I can see me swearing and struggling. So, yes. My recommendation, if you're building this, put the BNC in before you thread the wire. Some idiot who's sitting here behind the camera should have realised that. So anyway, the next thing to do is take one wire and solder it to the solder tag here. So I shall get on with that because I haven't fired my soldering iron up. There we go. And then we can come back and do the final couple of connections. Well, here's the uh, loop aerial all sort of done. I didn't film the last bits, so I'm sure you've seen people wire things up before. So one strand of wire comes in and goes through the little uh, PCB that I made. If you're making, if, you know, if you're joining two resistors, remember to cut the tracks between each each side of the resistor. Um, and then I've heat shrunk it and then hot glued that little PCB pack up the top there. One side goes onto the live terminal of the BNC. The other side is obviously ground and that comes and that's joined to the loop itself and that comes and is soldered to the solder tag of the BNC. So I've cleaned that joint up if I didn't just mention that. I think I did. So that's it. Done. Now we need to get a radio up on the bench and see if it works. Let's hope it does, otherwise that's a waste of an afternoon. Right, here we are. I've set the uh, signal generator up to about 850 kilohertz. 
connects it up to low pair we've got this beautiful Roberts RFM3 in grey schoolboy cloth schoolboy trouser cloth um, and we're going to see if my aerial actually works so turning the signal generator on might help so let's um, and there it is so even an idiot like me can't connect it up incorrectly so let's let's bring it closer it's absolutely blasting it I've got the attenuator turned down on the SIG gen as we move further away good and there should be a null point around the end of the rod somewhere I think there So Hacker recommends 24 inches between the end of your ferrite rod and the radio and the centre of the loop here and 24 inches is obviously two feet so if I want to work on a radio in the middle of the bench here the loop will need to be at the very end of my workbench over there which is currently occupied by an avometer so that's about where it will need to be so yeah very very happy I made this obviously thanks to Chris for the inspiration to get my backside in gear and actually make one um, but yeah, as I say it was something I've been planning to do for absolutely years and uh, now I've got one I'm very happy I have because um, I've never seen one that's been made to hacker instructions that you know loop aerials loop aerials but I've never seen one actually made to their specifications so that must be a, a first for a lot of people actually that beautiful welding in there that's gorgeous I should get a job working on aircraft or something so anyway thanks very much for watching and I hope um, that gave other people some inspiration to also make one I'm going to finish this off by lacquering the, lacquering the brass here and give this copper tubing a, um, a good old shine because that helps the electrons and then lacquer that as well so it doesn't go all sort of green and horrible and brown over the years. Right, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Bye.